Abby Gelman, registered dietitian and chef from Culinary Nutrition Cuisine. And I'm Julie Harrington, registered dietitian and chef. And today we are making pomegranate poached pears. So if you've never worked with pomegranate juice, the first thing you want to start off with is getting 100% pomegranate juice. You really don't want to be using that pomegranate juice cocktail because that has a lot of added sugar. And we have pears today of the Bartlett variety. You can also get Bosch or Anjou or Asian pears. There's many different kinds, but you want to make sure that they are not ripe, actually. You want them to be hard because we will be cooking them. If they're too ripe, they're already soft and then they'll just essentially become mush when we put them in the pan. So keeping firm pears on your list. And we have some Cara Cara orange here. You can see that it looks kind of like the inside of a grapefruit, but it is actually an orange. So that's gonna add a sweetness to our pomegranate juice because the pomegranate juice can be a little tart. Mm -hmm. So it's a natural way to add some sweetness in there. We also have some sweetness in the form of maple sugar. We don't have a lot. It's about two thirds of a cup. You can even use less. And if you don't have maple sugar, you can also use maple syrup. I would just decrease that to no more than about a half a cup of maple syrup. And then we have some red wine that's typically in some poached pears, but if you don't want to use any red wine, you can easily use a little more pomegranate juice or a grape true juice. grape juice. Mm -hmm. And then we have some cloves and cinnamon stick. You can also use star anise. You can use any kind of warming spices you like. Some ground ginger might be nice, even a whole knob of ginger in there as well. So essentially we are making a poaching liquid that is very flavorful while the pears are going to simmer and soak in. So I'm gonna start off by pouring about one and a half cups of our pomegranate juice. While she does that, I'm going to peel this last pear. And I know that we like to keep the peel on for all the fiber and extra nutrients. So what I actually end up doing is saving the peel and just eating it as a snack. Because when we cook it in the poached pears, it really um, is best without the peel. So I just added our pomegranate juice and our red wine. I am adding in our maple sugar and our orange zest. So by adding the orange zest, it will really infuse that orange flavor without too much acidity. We're also gonna be adding in our orange slices, but not juicing them, because we don't want them too acidic. And along with our maple sugar and zest, we are adding in a full cinnamon stick and um, a couple pieces of cloves. So those can go in whole because it's just going to be infusing into that liquid. So you wanna cook this down until that maple sugar dissolves and get, bring it to a simmer. Now to take the core out of the pear, you can just use a metal teaspoon or a melon baller and you just kind of work your way around and pop it right out. It should come out pretty easily. This helps infuse that flavor right into the pear too, so it's really cooking and infusing from the inside out. You could also cut your pear in half, but it does look really beautiful when you serve a full pear on a plate. Yes. All right, I'm gonna cut these orange slices in half again, just to make sure that we get it really fused into that liquid. And again, I'm not juicing them. They're just there to really start infusing that flavor. We also have here on the side, ready to go later, we have taken plain Greek yogurt and put a little ricotta in there and mixed it around and we put some orange zest on top and we'll whip that a little bit as a dollop at the end. You can also use mascarpone is delicious or creme fraiche. You could even make homemade whipped cream. Just a little bit of creaminess at the end to work in with the rest of the pear. Pomegranate juice we're using today, which has a lot of polyphenols, which are antioxidants that help with memory and cognition. So our poaching liquid has come to a simmer. We are adding in our pears. You just wanna find, there will be enough space. I know the pan looks crowded, but during the cooking process, you are going to be spooning more of that poaching liquid on top. So right now, as you see, it kind of, put them in by letting some of that poaching liquid get into that um, stem that you just cored out. So what I'm gonna do is take a spoon and just start basting essentially our pears with some of the poaching liquid and putting a cover on this and then they're just going to cook through. After a couple minutes, you wanna just take it off, stir it around a little bit so the different areas of the pear are going to make sure they're getting fully poached properly. Yep, and it'll take about 15, 20 minutes. Just check it periodically. And then we'll whip up our 
uh, yogurt mixture and we'll see you back here in 15. Okay. Okay, so we have our whole pear here. It sits up gorgeous. And we've got some of the poaching liquid. We're gonna pour that in there. And then we've got our yogurt, ricotta, and orange zest. Beautiful, and we're just going to, where should I put it? In there. Right there, all right. We're gonna put a dollop right there. Nice. The richness and creaminess are gonna add and complement to the sweetness and tartness of the poached pear. All right, so there is our pomegranate poached pear. I'm Abby with Culinary Nutrition Cuisine. And I'm Julie Harrington, registered dietitian and chef. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.